Um, I'm Marsha from Portage District Library. Most of you know me because I live in um, We are very privileged this afternoon to have a wonderful panel. You've already heard some music. You've seen some wonderful photographs. Um, and when you go up, the photographs are going to be up for another month. So please watch um, and come back when you have some time just to look at them. I, we have one more people who come back and then they keep looking and keep Photographs that you need to look at for a while that penetrate your soul. Um, this panel grew out of, and this panel is based on an immigrant story, um, an immigrant story, of a photographer's view of our global and local neighbors. And how this got started is we have the, our We Together book for this year is Strength of What Remains by Tracy Kidder. And that is about uh, uh, someone who comes in from Burundi, uh, and, uh, a medical student who had to flee from Burundi during the, um, the um, genocide in Burundi and Rwanda. And he came to the United States with $200 in his pocket, not knowing a soul. And his, the process of assimilation, and what that must be like for someone who doesn't speak the language and doesn't know the customs. Um, and then what he did with his life after going through all he went through. It's an amazing book. Tracy Kidder is going to be here on March 10th. Deo Gracias, who, about whom the book is written, will be here on, uh, I think it's May 16th. So information about all of the Reading Together programs, um, including this one and some others here at the library and all over town are in brochures on the back table. Most libraries have copies of the book. Um, we're going to get more, I promise. Um, we have a lot of reserves, but libraries are, have lots of copies of the book. So please, if you get a chance, read it and attend some of the events that are going on. They're just amazing. Um, this also, what also happened is we connected with uh, Bruce Hood, who um, I've known before, who helped us, has helped us here before, and also Eric Holliday, who had a exhibit here. And we kind of brainstormed that what kind of exhibit could we have with uh, immigration? And we had the most wonderful talks. Um, they were, I said, they were, they're goosebump talks about the importance of immigrants in our lives, how they enrich our, our lives, whether they are local or global, and how we need to look at our world um, globally and as human beings rather than as different sects or as different cultures or that we are really, really, truly all, all of one and yet very different and individual and we can learn and grow from each other. So we, some of that and I could go on and on, but, um, so we have a panel today and that, um, we're going to be talking to some people who have um, their, their work here um, and some people are not on the panel who do and um, Dow and make sure I say your name right. Um, oh, what do you say? Okay, is um, a volunteer for international child care. His photographs are down here in the children's area, and most of those are of Haiti. Um, he's going to be talking to us. We have Elizabeth. Did I say that? Yes. Okay. Good. And she has collected work from her native Kenya. Those are in the northern end of the library in the atrium. She's going to talk to us a little bit about speaking of amazing stories. She has one herself and just briefly tell us a little bit about that and why she collects Kenyan art and why it's important for her to, to have that, that out for us to see and the importance of art in telling her story. Um, then we're going to have, um, Eric is going to tell us a little bit about the project that he pulled together um, as a curator with um, some photojournalists, including Jake, who we have here. And um, he's going to talk about meeting local immigrants and in their home environments, in their work environments, and learning about them through photography and through talking with them. So I'm very interested in that too. Um, we have Bruce is going to talk about slide, show his slides. He is a photographer for the Foods Resource Bank. We have had his photographs here before. We constantly get people asking when are those going to be back. They are the photographs that are in the um, entranceway, the ramp, and down the stairway. Amazing photographs. Um, we also have. Mohammed Hagshana, no, no, did I do it? <laughs> he, he, I, and I met, I met Mo when he did a poem. We had poetry in 15 languages, and he did one on, in Iran. Uh, was it Farsi? Farsi. Farsi. That just everyone just went. They melted, and they didn't even know what it was about. Then when they read what it was about, it was like, oh my gosh. 
and he is one of our neighbors, our local neighbors, and it was so wonderful to meet him. So he is on the panel as well, and his pictures are up upstairs. He, um, and he's going to tell us a little bit about his experience um, assimilating into the United States. And then, last but not least, Calvin Ruff and Carolyn Keeble are going to tell us a little bit about their group, the Joint in the Drum, and I don't know I can ask for that. Doing ya? Doing ya. I will get it. Doing ya drum and dance ensemble, um, who are going to hopefully come back here in April. But they're going to talk a little bit about how they got started, why they got started. So, I'm going to start out with John telling us a little bit about the International Child Care, and then we'll go to Elizabeth, and then we'll go on to, to uh, Bruce Wood. That's fine. Uh, I, first of all, just thank you. I feel honored and humbled to be curators here, and Bruce, and to be included, because I don't know if I deserve it. Uh, my name is Don Obermesek. Uh, I've worked with International Child Care since 2008. I've uh, worked mostly in uh, Haiti and the Dominican Republic, which is called Hispaniola, for those of you who don't know, the island itself. Uh, International Child Care has been in Haiti since the 60s and in Dominican since the 80s. And what they do is they, they've established two permanent large hospitals in Haiti and about 20 or so permanent medical clinics in very rural areas. Uh, they also use mobile clinics on a regular basis and going through the cities, Port-au-Prince or any other towns, just to get to people who cannot get to the hospital to immunize the children, to eliminate the childhood death rate. Uh, right now, the biggest problem over there is the water uh, with the dysentery and with the cholera. Uh, and of course, uh, Haiti is the poorest third world country in the northern hemisphere. Uh, that was, uh, got its label before the earthquake even happened. Uh, and I guess the biggest thing with international child care is their desire is to empower the people of the country. The nationals are hired and trained and run all the facilities and all the programs in the country. Americans or other country, people from other countries do not come in and run the place. It is the people who have the, the desire and the drive and the, the ability to learn within Haiti are the people running it. That gives them resources, money, able to help their families. And that's probably the biggest thing that drew me to ICC is that they try to get the people of the country to take care of themselves, which they all want to do. If you've uh, never been to another country, uh, you know, you, you, you get most, you get my soapbox, you get most of your information from our media or some other slant to go into a country and talk to people face to face and say, you know, what, what is it you desire? Their desire is exactly the same as ours. To take care of your family, to be able to support yourself, to be able to take care of the problems that are going on within your country, and you just need the resources. So it, is a, it was a wonderful experience. Uh, been back after the earthquake as well, and that has been a horrible, horrible experience, uh, just in regard to people just simply who didn't have anything have less. They're living in, 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 in a hole that was made from a building falling down and they crawl up in there or they get a tarp and they put it over where their house was and that's where they live. No protection, no security, no nothing. Uh, so international child care is reaching out and, and implementing these programs as fast as they can with the resources that they are given with finances, of course, and of course political problems there as well create a problem with the money being able to be received by them. Same story as we all have. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, the biggest thing we're looking to do is to reestablish the flagship hospital. Grace Children's Hospital was destroyed during the earthquake. It was a uh, it was a uh, embassy that was abandoned and they took it over so it's a large campus but there's nothing left to be secure in. You'll see some of the pictures on the wall out there, some of the damage to it. Uh, the other hospital is, is up and running and that was part of the Haiti. Uh, but again, the thing we're struggling against as well as all these gentlemen and ladies have is that 
we're trying to reach out and get as much resources to them to have them utilize their self as much as possible. Um, and uh, that's really probably about it. I have paperwork back there, anybody interested. Uh, they always want short-term missionaries. If you're looking for an organization to support, I can, I can give you my, my seal of approval. Funds go where they say they go, and they won't get tied up in political mess and all that kind of thing. So, political spiel. Hey.